Hello and welcome to Tengi Talks TV and Movies. I'm Tengi and today I've got a pretty interesting film for you. It's the true story of the Kelly Gang from 1906. This is believed to be the world's first ever full-length narrative feature film. This film was shot in Melbourne where I'm from and I learned today that it was actually filmed in some suburbs very close to where I live which I think is really cool. This film also features some authentic Ned Kelly armor which was loaned to the filmmakers for the shooting of the movie. Now apparently when this film was first screened they had live musical accompaniment but they also had live sound effects including the use of coconuts to the, uh, for the sound of horses hooves and the use of blank cartridges for the gunfire scenes. I cannot even imagine what that must have been like for the original audience of this movie. The director of this film was Charles Tate and the original running time was over an hour but all that remains today is I think about half an hour's worth of film. Let's take a look at the true story of the Kelly Gang, the world's first feature film. film story of the Kelly gang is believed to have been one hour in length only fragments known to survive 970 feet which totals almost 15 minutes of screen time when projected at 18 frames per second okay this study version aims at reconstructing the film's narrative based upon the best evidence provided by the original footage and intertitles combined with original additional titles and other associated materials postcards the poster the original program booklet a more complete sense of the structure of the original program is created. Okay, that sounds good. Also included two brief animated segments recreated from short film strips reproduced in an article from Lone Hand. The original titles are shown as they are in the film. Reconstructed titles are based on text from the original program booklet and appear in normal text. Wow, someone has put a lot of work into this. Here we go. 1906. Film opens at the Kelly homestead where Ned's mother is at home. Shortly afterwards, Constable Fitzpatrick arrives at the homestead looking for Dan. Mrs. Kelly tries to deter him, but he treats her roughly and Kate comes to her rescue. The film quality is actually pretty good for 1906. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ooh, creepy policeman. Yikes. Oof. Oh. Oof. Kate holds Fitzpatrick at bay with a loaded gun while the gang escapes. I'm trying to work out where this location is. <laughs> In the Wombat Rangers, the gang discussed what they will do next. Interesting that the focus is on the gang rather than Ned Kelly, which later films, I think, tend to have singled Ned out as the main character. Constables McIntyre and Lonigan remain behind and shoot parrots for amusement. Oof. Their shots alert the Kelly gang who come to see what the noise is all about. Yeah. <laughs> come to kill them, I think, is what they mean. Police are quickly surrounded by the gang. Do you think they were really saying that? <laughs> I think put up your hands and we'll shoot is probably more like how it went. Ah, oh, the policeman's gonna run. He's gonna run. 
You see, see, he's thinking about it. The gang enjoy afternoon tea when Steve Hart rushes back with the news that Kennedy and Scanlon are returning. Ned Kelly tells McIntyre that Lonigan was shot in self-defense. Hmm. They're very much taking the side of Ned Kelly in this film. And it wasn't that long after he was <clears throat> executed, I guess, that this was made. Ganga declared outlaws. The government offers a reward of £8,000 for their capture, which would have been a fortune back then, I guess. Okay, so this is a postcard they've used, or a photo. Interesting. That actor did not look surprised when a gun was drawn on him. Wow, they're really painting him as they... <laughs> as a Robin Hood figure, aren't they? This is weird because it's... It's like a reenactment without acting, if that makes sense. People are just sort of moving through the scene, but there's not a lot of um, acting going on. Wow, imagine having this hawker coming to your house with all these goods in his carriage. That would have been pretty exciting. Portraying him as completely gentlemanly, though, are they, Ned Kelly? I mean, he's kicking his victims while robbing them. <laughs> See, that, that kid, that's exactly what I'm talking about. He's not acting, he's just walking through it. A kid would be frightened in this scenario, I would think. I'm not saying this to criticise this production, but I think it's just a very different approach to making a movie at this time and very different expectations that the audience would have had I guess because how much narrative dramatic storytelling would you have seen um, on the movie screen at this point in time 1906 probably not a, a huge amount or if you had it would be just very short I'm really curious about the way the film is portraying the Kelly gang here because in some scenes it seems like they were portraying them you know in a very generous light like they didn't mean to kill the policeman it was self-defense whatever but now they're just stealing cigars and stuff it's not like they're stealing food and money to survive well this robbery is really not going well we've had two carriages full of people turn up unexpectedly oof Oof, watch out! <laughs> that horse had his own ideas. That is an awful lot of hostages to handle. Dan Kelly seems to be getting a lot of screen time in this version. Interesting. Because really, Ned is the only one people talk about today, not, not the others that I hear about anyway. Wow, they're really living it up, aren't they? Cigars and booze. Oof. <laughs> Can't really control that situation, can you? <laughs> they made him take his hands off the, um, the reins and the horse just wandered away. 
In other circumstances, that situation could be used as a comedic device, people trying to do a hold-up and just hordes of people keep arriving. Oh, wow. Look at this. Animation. Oh, my goodness. So they're taking even more prisoners back to the, um, the station. What are they going to do with them all? Okay, some stills there. Oh, interesting. Interesting to see a woman presented in this way at this time. That would have been pretty transgressive. Okay, so trackers are hunting down the gang as they're hiding in the mountains. Oh, interesting. Nice featuring some indigenous actors there. There's the trackers. Glad to see they're using real indigenous actors and not blackface. That's really clever using these images from a newspaper to animate these segments of the film. Ooh, Jared goes to the door and Joe Byrne, his old school fellow, steps into the doorway and shoots him dead. Wow. Death to all traitors. What a shame these scenes are missing. Oof. That looks grim. They're not showing away from the, um, you know, the pretty horrible violence that the Kelly gang inflicted. The sound of the shots, two of the police hide under the bed in a further act of cowardice. Mrs. Sherritt is used as a hostage by the others. Okay, so they're also presenting the police as pretty bad. So really, they're presenting the gang and the police as both, you know, problematic figures. Wow. This was so action-packed. A really complex uh, and ambitious narrative they were filming here by the sounds of it. That looks ridiculously dangerous. The Kelly gang carry out their plan to derail the train, bringing police reinforcements. They capture the plate layers whom they force at gunpoint to tear up the rails. That's a pretty major act of sabotage. Once the rails are torn up, the gang take the plate layers to the nearby Glen Rowan Hotel. News of the impending disaster spreads amongst the patrons. Wow. Inside the hotel, Kurnow, the schoolmaster, tries to win over the gang by revealing that the station master, Mr. Stanistreet, has a gun. The station master puts up a fight, but the gang take the gun from him. What's the schoolmaster doing trying to win over the gang in the siege? By giving them more guns. <laughs> I guess he's on the side of the gang. Weird. During the argument, Kurnow gets away. He heads to the railway in the dark of night. Proceeding along the track, he risks his life to successfully stop the train. Well, lucky that he did. Maybe it was all the ruse. The gun thing. Ned and the gang are unaware that the train is saved and they continue to revel. Ned, standing on a barrel, gives a toast and is surprised when shots are fired into the hotel. It's so tantalising only having the intertitles and not, not all the scenes. In the ensuing battle, the son of the hotel owner is killed by a stray bullet. Here we go. It's a shame the film is so deteriorated. Imagine this with live gunfire going off in the in the theatre when people were watching it. So Joe Byrne has been killed in the shootout by the look of it. Oof! The police decide to drive out the gang by setting fire to the hotel. Okay. What else could they do at that point, I guess? Not a million miles away from smoke bombs and things being deployed now. It does seem a bit extreme, though. Setting fire to the hotel with hostages in it. Father Gibney implores the police to stop as there are women and children inside. The police attempt to prevent him from entering the building. Wow. The police really are presented in a very ambivalent way in this movie. Really interesting.
Oh, look at that tinting. Fantastic. I had no idea there, were, there was tinting in this movie. Steve and Dan shoot each other. Oh, on purpose. Wow. Gallant rescue by Father Gibney of the Wounded Plate Layer. This is grim. Grim high stakes drama. True crime. I guess this was the first true crime movie. Maybe. Maybe not. That's a nice touch. The smoke seeping out of that little doorway. Look at him smiling. <laughs> That's what I mean about no one's acting. During the night, Ned Kelly makes his escape. Heavily weighted with his armour, he decides to come back at the break of day to see if he can rejoin his comrades. Here we go. This is actual Ned Kelly armour that this guy's wearing. That's pretty amazing. Oh, I wish we could see it. Ned is seen approaching from the bush. The troopers fire shot after shot at the tall, silent figure. The bullets have no effect except to stagger him. I guess this is Ned Kelly's gimmick, isn't it? The armor. It's pretty crazy. Can't believe they would lend someone actual Ned Kelly armor to use in the movie. Kelly cannot take straight aim, his left hand being wounded. However, the police find his vulnerable spot firing into his legs, finally bringing him down. Kelly keeps on shooting, fighting hard for his life. Is the most dramatic scene in the film. If only we could see more of it. <laughs> it's so sad, isn't it, that so many of these films have deteriorated like this. Thus falls the last of the Kelly gang, and with the fall of Ned Kelly, the last of the Bush Rangers. What about the execution? Are they going to show that? No, that's the end. Okay. I found the story of the Kelly gang really interesting, if frustrating, in that so much of it is missing or deteriorated to the point where it's very hard to watch. This film was made only about 26 years after the execution of Ned Kelly, and it would absolutely have been within living memory of many of the people who watched this film, perhaps the people who made the film, this was all still very fresh at that time, which I think makes the perspective the film gives all the more interesting. Now, Kelly is such a polarizing figure. I know a lot of people here in Australia uh, look up to him as some kind of anti-establishment, you know, rebel maverick hero, while others see him as a, you know, a violent uh, criminal. So given that polarized view that many people have of him, and I guess would have had of him at that time, the film seems to tread a kind of middle line. They're not presenting him as a as a hero, as a total Robin Hood, although at times they do touch on that idea. They do not shy away from his brutality, the way he treats his hostages, and he does take a lot of hostages. At the same time, the film does not present the police in the way we might expect a film to from that period. It does present the police as doing a lot of terrible things, uh, assaulting Ned Kelly's sister, or the, trying to set fire to the building with all the hostages in it. That's pretty insane stuff. I think the film's most shocking moment is when two of the gang members uh, kill each other during the siege to avoid capture by the police. This is still a shocking moment today. You've got to wonder what audiences in 1906 um, thought about this when they first saw it, how it affected them, because I think it must have had a massive impact. I mean, we're only seeing glimpses here, but to see this whole high stakes true crime drama uh, appearing before your eyes with live gunfire <laughs> must have been a fairly sensational and overwhelming experience.
I was just doing some reading about this film and it said at the time of the film's um, making, Ned Kelly's mother and sister were still alive and interest in Bush Ranger stories was huge. There were other touring um, theatrical plays about Ned Kelly going on at the time of this film's release. So he was very much in the minds of the public at this moment. Okay, so what has not aged well about this film is the style of acting it captures. And as I commented while watching this, to a modern viewer it really appears there is pretty much no acting going on. There is no kind of emotion that comes across. People just walk through the scenes um, as if they're doing a sort of rehearsal take. Just looking it up on Wikipedia now, it says that uh, quite a few of the director's family members are among the cast of this film. So maybe there weren't a lot of professional actors used in this movie. And I suppose at the end of the day, really the action and the true life events are the star of this film more than the actors are. Because the actors really aren't the star of this film, if that makes any sense. It is about recreating and conveying the factual events in the story of the Kelly Gang. That is much more what this film is about than the emotional um, nuance, the drama of the situation as we would expect to see it represented today. It almost has that feel of like a newsreel type of presentation rather than a dramatised presentation. And very interestingly, the film was actually banned in some of the areas where Ned Kelly and his gang had been active. And you have to wonder how people who'd survived some of these robberies might have felt about the events and characters depicted in this movie. It would still have been a fresh trauma to a lot of people. I guess watching it now, how the story of the Kelly gang comes across is more of a docudrama rather than a drama. I think that's really where it sits. People talk about it as the first narrative feature film, but it's not really a feature film in that sense that we would expect today. It is much more of a sort of reenactment docudrama. <laughs> If you've enjoyed watching the story of the Kelly gang with me today, I'd love it if you would like and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me and I really hope I see you next time. Bye.